Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beauty Live. Welcome back, Beauty Tribe. I hope everyone's having a great Friday, a great Friday the 13th <laughs> to be specific. Um, we have some really exciting things going on to kind of go along with that really good transformational energy, right? When it comes to Friday the 13th. Today, I have Kathleen from Dolce & Gabbana with me to give some new insight on some smell goods, some fragrances that are really transform the way you present yourself in the world. Hey, Kathleen. Hi, Kiana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so excited to be here with everyone today. Hello to everyone watching. Uh, welcome to a session that's dedicated to Dolce & Gabbana. And I'm super, super excited to be here and talk all things fragrance. So I wanted to let you know, for those of you who don't know, Dolce & Gabbana introduced beauty over 30 years ago now, and their purpose with beauty is to gift Italian experiences to beauty lovers around the world. You eat, sleep, breathe uh, Italy when you purchase Dolce & Gabbana Beauty. Since launching Beauty, the brand has launched so many iconic fragrances, not only for Dolce & Gabbana, but in the industry. So you might recognize ones like Light Blue, The One, Dolce, Kiana, I know that was one of your personal favorites that we talked about. So very excited to go through everything with you today and make sure you hang out until the end because I'm going to go through my favorite industry tips and tricks to make sure that you are getting the best wear and longevity out of your fragrance. So Kiana, you're my partner today. I want to ask you, do you wear fragrance based on your mood or does your fragrance set your mood? For me, my fragrance always sets the mood. So I want to make sure that wherever I'm going, like I'm bringing that energy with me, whether that's me wearing something floral and I want to feel a little bit more free, like my day is going to be easy breezy, like an everyday wear, or if I'm wearing something more rich, like a gourmand fragrance and I'm setting that tone, like I'm her, I'm an Aries, I'm in my Aries energy right now and I want to just rock it and kill it wherever I'm at. So it's always about setting the mood. <laughs> okay. I love that you said that because I am the exact same way. I feel like, and I really appreciate everyone who wakes up feeling like really sexy. I'm not a person that ever feels that way. So I don't wake up in the morning and go, I feel so sexy today. What fragrance am I going to put on to match my sexiness? But I may wake up and say, I want to feel sensual today. What fragrance is going to put me in that mood. And, you know, for me, I feel like fragrance really does set a tone, just like you said, and it really sort of gives you that personality and that, uh, that energy that you might be looking for in your day. So we talked about it earlier, but I would love for you to share, do you have a Dolce & Gabbana fragrance that you love and wear or ones that, you know, really stand out to you? So my favorite Dolce & Gabbana fragrance is the original Dolce. I love it. It just gives me that grown woman feel. So I am a millennial. I'm a youngster millennial though. Um, I'm 28. So that's what I mean by youngster. But it just kind of makes you feel like a grown woman. Like you're in your bag, you're in your career. And like, I don't know. It's just like a Carrie Bradshaw fragrances, maybe. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well, I love that. And that is an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. And maybe one day we'll have some time to talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, you and I. I'm actually really excited that coincidentally today we get to talk about uh, one of my personal favorite fragrances, which is Q and the franchise that it falls within. And what I love about this fragrance is that for me, it is my everyday. It's a fragrance I can put on and I feel really good. I I feel really fresh and sensual when I put it on. So I'm really, really excited to talk about Q. But before we talk about Q, we have to talk about where it all started. And that is with our K fragrances. You can see the imagery behind me here. And so the inspiration um, for K and now the introduction of Q, I want you to think of it as a power couple. So two soulmates that come together, these great minds that think alike, that concept of, you know, two great minds are better than one. And when we set the scene, I want you to imagine this like 
vast desert and it's prickling with heat and tension and you know sensuality and that is the perfect setting for our duo to meet and their magnetic attraction really draws them to one another so i want to start with k um k eau de toilette this was the first uh launch in the k collection you have it there with you and before we get into the juice, I want to talk about the packaging. So you're holding it in your hand. You can feel it's a very heavy, heavy weighted glass bottle. And the bottle itself has a quite modern approach. But then the cap has this renaissance, right, style. So you get this sort of juxtaposition or this contrast that we, we use that word a lot at Dolce & Gabbana and think of, you know, two things that are opposite, but when they come together, they create harmony. And so we see this contrast in the packaging with that modern heavy glass bottle and then this renaissance lid. All of the fragrances are tied to our fashion house. So the inspiration for K was our Royal Love collection and we see that here in the packaging. So we're going to start with the Eau de Toilette. This is a woody, aromatic, spicy fragrance, okay? It really is a fragrance that is very unique. I think we can say that about all Dolce & Gabbana fragrances. There really isn't anything else that smells like it. So when you really want a fragrance that's unique to you, I think this is, uh, this is definitely going to be the one. So a woody, aromatic, spicy fragrance. It opens and spray it with me. Let's spray it together, actually. And you're going to notice when it opens with its top note. And when I say top note, I'm talking about your first impression of the fragrance, okay? This is the, your first introduction, your first meeting. And it should smell fresh, right? And that is from the Sicilian lemon and the blood orange that is in this fragrance. And then we start to melt into the heart of the fragrance. And the heart of this fragrance has a little bit of spiciness with pimento chili pepper. And then we blend into this elegance that contrasts, there's that word again, the chili pepper, um, and that is lavender. So you get this beautiful sort of spicy, aromatic heart to this fragrance. And then we settle on the base of the fragrance, which is masculine, it's woody, um, it's a little bit sort of earthy, and that comes from our cedar wood. There's vetiver in here, and there is some patchouli. This fragrance, I would describe it as masculine, authentic, um, uh, seductive, you know, someone with a lot of charisma, right, would wear this fragrance. What are you picking up, Kiana? What are you smelling with this scent? I definitely can pick up the lavender and the lemon scent. So it definitely smells fresh. I feel like this is how I want my house to smell. Like when I yes. It. it gives you that feeling of masculine energy, but also it's really warm and exciting and just yes. comforting. I really like it. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. And, you know, with this particular fragrance, I feel like um, lots, like it, it's definitely something that our male clients love and our female clients love, you know, really feel free to experiment with these types of signatures because it's really your body chemistry that's going to dictate how it's going to smell. I forgot to mention one thing when we were talking about the packaging and I want to talk about the cap one more time. When you purchase a K or Q fragrance, you are getting its own little piece of art with this cap because these caps are handcrafted. In the case of the K, we see this um, sort of like blue stone. The inspiration is the blue lazuli lapis stone. So I wanted to mention that because they really do feel like a little piece of art uh, when you put them out on your vanity. Okay, so let's move on to the Eau de Parfum. So the Eau de Toilette was so well received and everyone loved it. And so it gave way to the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum, we'll see that the juice is a little bit darker. The cap is a silver cap instead of the gold cap. That's how you can kind of tell the difference. So with this particular fragrance, I would definitely say that this is bold, it's radiant, it's sensual, and you're gonna notice some similarities or some familiarities to the Eau de Toilette, but it's gonna have its own nuances. Remember, I said that the Eau de Toilette was a woody, aromatic, spicy. 
The eau de parfum is a woody, aromatic, fruity. So if you like the concept of the eau de toilette, but you want a little bit of a sweeter nuance to it, um, this is definitely the one for you. So let's spray it together. I'm gonna spray it with you so we enjoy this experience together. Yeah, can already tell the difference. So you're gonna notice some top note familiarity. So we open with that Sicilian lemon. And the reason you see a lot of Sicilian lemon and orange and Dolce and & Gabbana is because of our Mediterranean soul. So that is an iconic, um, you know, part of the brand, if you will, and these ingredients that come from Italy and specifically Sicily. So we see that it opens with that same fresh familiarity. So we have the lemon, we have the blood orange. The heart, there's still a bit of spiciness from the chili pepper, but there's also a bit of that lavender, which you'll probably pick up right in your palate, but there's an addition of something a little surprising and that's the fruity element and that is creamy fig milk. So this gives a little bit of a twist and it gives a little bit of that sweeter nuance in a fruity way, not so much in a gourmand way. And then the base, we see the fam familiarity of the cedar wood, very creamy, very smooth. Then we go into that vetiver as well. So we get the earthy sort of tone. But in this particular base, and remember your base is what's gonna stay with you. That's the trail that you carry with you throughout the day. And in this base, we have the Nagaramotha wood and that adds a touch of smokiness to the base. So. Great to have both. They're both going to give you two different finishes and two different wares, but very different personalities. Make sense? No, it makes total sense. Which one um, is resonating the most with you? The eau de toilette with a spicier finish or the eau de parfum with a touch of fruity? Um, the eau de parfum with a touch of fruity. I love this one. Like it really hits on your points of charismatic. Like it's a flirty fragrance. I really love that one. It's definitely hitting the nail on the head for me. So. Oh, perfect. I love it. And remember to everyone watching, fragrance is super sensorial. It's super personal. It connects with your emotions, right? So it really is a personal experience. So always make sure when you're in store, you know, where you're checking out a fragrance, pop it on um, and really enjoy the experience. Okay, so we talked about our kings, right? Now we need to talk about the newest addition, our Q. She resembles the queen. We see it in the packaging, the red juice. This is a, you know, red is a very regal, majestic color, as is blue, right, when we look at K. And so this fragrance is all about being passionate and powerful, just like the woman that wears this fragrance. We see the beautiful crown. She gets her own crown on this bottle. And it actually, I'll share a fun fact with you. It took two years to design this handmade crown that adorns the bottle as a piece of art. So when you spray this fragrance and we'll spray it together, I'm going to grab my blotter here. You may notice a bit of familiarity with that Sicilian lemon in the top, the blood orange in the top, but there is jasmine petal in the top note of this fragrance. So it contrasts the citrus really beautifully. And then there's an unexpected note of cherry. Remember the Eau de Parfum in K had a fruity heart as well. So the fruity heart in Q is actually cherry. And the particular type or version of cherry, it's called a Belle Magnifique. And it's a little bit um, sweet and tart. Think of a cherry, right? It's juicy. So really, really beautiful, beautiful um, heart to this fragrance that it starts to sort of melt into. There's also the addition of heliotrope in the heart and heliotrope is like a sweet floral, if you will. And then our base, we land on this beautiful base of cedarwood. Again, cedarwood, I love to describe it as a woody tone that's really creamy and smooth. And then we also have musk in the base. Musk is very sensual when it develops on the skin. So it leaves this really beautiful trail. What I love to say about Q, and it's part of the reason that I love it, this is a fragrance that it lays very close to the body, to the skin. It almost becomes like a part of your aura. 
So that we sometimes make joke about fragrances that walk into a room before you do, right? And this particular fragrance, actually, you'll smell it the most when someone leans in close to you. So it's really just a part of your sort of whole energy when you wear this particular fragrance. So I love, love, love this fragrance. Like I said, I wear it every day. It's my go-to. What do you think about this fragrance? No, I think this is a great everyday wear perfume like it instantly when I smelled it I felt like this is comfortable I can wear this to the office I can wear this on yes. a date. I can wear this anywhere and I love that you said it kind of just you can easily put it on the skin I know you'll talk more about that with the tips and tricks but it's just something that'll just linger but it's chill like it's not like yes you know <laughs> yeah I totally it becomes like one with you and then you'll sort of like catch a whiff of yourself or maybe you'll put on a sweater and you'll think oh my gosh what is that oh it's me <laughs> So listen, we're coming up to gifting season and I know there's a lot of people that like celebrations and people getting married and all this. So can I just share one of my favorite gifts that no one would expect is to buy a power couple that you're celebrating the two fragrances together, right? Because it resembles the, the K and the Q is the king and the queen. So what a great gift idea. So pop that in your memory bank uh, if you need it for future gifting ideas. Okay, so now let's go into into tips and tricks on how to wear your fragrance and get the best wear out of your fragrance, right? So we hear this a lot. I don't think that this is a surprise for a lot of people, which is spray your fragrance on your pulse points. So we know the inner wrist, behind the earlobe, um, the sort of like inner elbow is another spot, even under the belly button. But do you know why? So the reason why is because these areas naturally emit heat. So every time they emit heat, they're going to help to diffuse your fragrance. So that's my first tip. Make sure you're getting all your warm spots on your body, if you will. The next tip is don't rub your fragrance after you spray it. Okay, that's a, a misconception. You can dab or press if you really want it to melt in with your natural oils, but you really don't want to rub because when you rub, you start to sort of bruise all the layers and the complexity of the fragrance. So spray and dab if you need to, but no rubbing. And if you are feeling like you want to wear a fragrance, but you don't want it to feel really intense on, think about also misting the fragrance in front of you and walking into it. That's another really great trick if you just want a hint of fragrance without feeling um, like you're wearing too much. The other thing is, and this may surprise you, is especially if you're a dry skin, moisturize your skin before you apply your fragrance. Fragrance adheres better to moisturize skin than to dry skin. So it's that concept of when we think of beauty, um, you know, the, and skincare, the wet sponge versus the dry sponge, that type of concept. It's the same type of concept for your fragrance. And my other trick, my last trick for now anyway, is to not leave your fragrance in the bathroom. <laughs> I know that's a hard one. We might be strapped for space, but cool place that's not humid. You know, we're using a lot of hot tools, blow dryers, everything in the bathroom. That's where we're taking our showers. So ideally out of direct sunlight, you want to display these beautiful bottles, of course, on, you know, on a table somewhere, but ideally in a bedroom, on a nightstand, um, not in direct sunlight, and ideally not in your bathroom. So those are my tips and tricks on how to get the best wear. Did you learn something new today, Kiana? Was that obvious to you or a good reminder? No, I definitely learned something new about the restroom or the bathroom storage, because I do have my current one I have in rotation it's on my little vanity in my bathroom so I'm gonna move that to my okay. bedroom now. Think of me. <laughs> yes I will think of you with that for sure. <laughs> I know and all of you as you moisturize your bodies before you're putting on uh, your fragrance think of me and your in your mind uh, telling you to do that so <laughs> well I okay so out of all the fragrances that we talked about today do you feel like there's a different one for each one of the moods that you want to set with yourself is there one that's really standing out to you you know what the first one we talked about so the toilet I want my house to smell like this every day I'm currently manifesting the love of my life too I'm reading this book called calling in the one and yes. I'm like I could spray my house with this and just attract in that masculine energy because this is this embodies Coming. the masculine energy that you want around you in your space so 
if you're also on a manifestation journey, you guys got to get this <laughs> just so you can have it. Yes. You know? <laughs> Make fragrance. I think we're starting something. Make fragrance a part of your manifestation mood board journey. Okay. Absolutely. You heard it here first. This is where this trend has started. So, well, listen, I want to thank you so, so much for having me today. I want to leave you with um, a little, you know, note about Dolce & Gabbana, if you will. And that is obviously our designer duo is, um, you know, a part of everything that we put out in the brand and just how fashions are meant to sort of um, define the silhouette of the body, if you will, we feel that fragrances are the gateway to the soul. And our fragrances are going to accompany you through the most wonderful, crazy, even manifesting times of your life. And so we are going to be there, you know, with you for that. And I hope that in today's session, everyone watching maybe found a new signature fragrance that they want to try. We have a whole portfolio of fragrances for you to experience, definitely. So thank you for joining. I hope that you found a fragrance to accompany you on your life's journey. And I will see you all next time. Thank you so much, Kiana. I really appreciated being with you today. Thanks, Kathleen. And for our viewers, remember, you can go try these scents out for yourself at your local PX or BX. Use your military star card for an additional 10% off. But of course, Dolce & Gabbana is available at a military exclusive price tax free for our authorized shoppers. And you can also shop the Dolce & Gabbana collection online at shopmyexchange.com. So everyone have a great rest of your day as you're planning your wedding gifts, your Christmas gifts. Keep Dolce & Gabbana in mind. And we hope to see you back here on our next episode. Bye. Bye.